Okay, um, welcome to part two of documenting botanical diversity. So this is just a little bit of a case study on using iNaturalist as a tool for detecting and monitoring potential invasive species. So there's an idea in weed invasion of um, this, this sort of typical curve of weed invasion. So there's a point at which something first becomes established when the population is at a really, really low level and can just sort of exist in this way where it, just, it may or may not even be detected and can pretty easily be eradicated if it is discovered during this time. And then um, and this is this idea of the sleeper weed where these non-native species will be in the landscape at really low proportions and people kind of ignore them. And then all of a sudden something changes, maybe they adapt to local conditions and the population undergoes um, rapid growth. And at which point they level off at a high population level and can no longer be contained. So the idea of being able to discover or find weeds somewhere along this, this part of this, this graph, you know, through time, um, gives you an opportunity to try to eliminate weeds or prevent them from becoming widespread invasive species. So um, this is a, a plant that um, <clears throat> I was noticing up in the, the East Bay Hills and some of the regional park areas, and uh, it did not key in the Jepson Manual. We weren't really sure what this plant was, um, and it was growing there. And I started kind of looking through iNaturalist and finding, oh, wow, this thing is actually in a few different places in the East Bay Hills. Um, and then um, I met this guy, Alex Bear on iNaturalist, who's a, a student who studies Lamiaceae and has a really good handle on global biodiversity. So this is, this is a case where being able to sort by taxon really enables experts to kind of look through and help to um, identify these things. So he was pretty quickly and easily able to identify this species. And, you know, part of the problem is, you know, we were looking in the the Jepson manual trying to figure out what this thing is or, you know, not really knowing where it's from when we should have been looking in the European flora, um, which uh, we later discovered. And so you can see this is the iNaturalist distribution. This thing is really widespread all throughout Europe and seems to has, have escaped in just a few places in North America. Um, so now we have all these iNaturalist data. So it was, is, was a matter of going through and trying to locate all these populations and, and try to get a handle on exactly where are these. Um, so sometimes people, especially if you take a photo really quickly and you don't wait for the satellite connection between your phone and, um, to, to come to load in, you'll have kind of a, um, a poor precisional accuracy or, you know, maybe it was a cloudy day or somebody has a crappy phone. There's all kinds of reasons that you might have um, poor precisional accuracy. And so in this case, there was a, a point up near Tilden Park, but it had poor poor accuracy. And so, you know, we were, were trying to figure out where this thing was. And it turns out it was actually on the Berkeley campus right in front of the genetics and plant biology teaching building. So it was planted in a bed. So we were able, able to find that. Um, and so we had all these different iNaturalist observations. And, and so it was a sort of like a pandemic lockdown project. We started just hiking trails and going through and trying to locate every single one of these populations on iNaturalist and, and try to get precise, accurate coordinates. Um, and then also making voucher specimens to to accession to the herbarium. And we were not the first to collect this. this actually, Barbara Erder had made collections of this plant years before. Um, and so we ended up just, just writing it up as a, a short note in Madronio. Um, but it there are there is a lot of precedent for using these sort of data. So New Zealand is very serious about weeds. They're very serious about invasive species and controlling invasive species. So um, they had a nice paper on on really actively soliciting data and using iNaturalist to 
to try to document and manage weeds. So, you know, some of the, the things I spoke about earlier and the advantage of iNaturalists are you can get really early detection. So you're the first observation of, of one of these species, especially if it's sort of in urban areas where a lot of people are hiking. Um, the first record is likely to be an iNaturalist observation. It's really easy to get really large quantities of data. So instead of just making one observation here or there, you can very quickly just walk around and document the extent of a population or you know how many places along the trail does it occur um, and then make all those, those data public. So it's also real-time monitoring. So as soon as you make those observations, you're able to upload them and share them so people will have, have access to them. And then also um, the technology has improved now that precisional accuracy using your cell phone is about as good as at least the um, GPS units that I've had in the past. And so that seems to be continuing to improve. And it, it's really only in the last 20 years or so that people, collect, plant collectors have routinely had access to a GPS in the field and are able to get this sort of precision of data compared to the hundreds of years of herbarium collections we have. We often don't have very precise um, distribution data. Um, and then also just being able to sort of crowdsource this effort and include lots of um, lots of people in, in the effort to sort of find these things. So it's just a sort of a short example, but I'm happy to take any questions from that.